Hello there, friends. This is Jill here in the pickle jar. And today I'm going to share with you something extremely personal, something so personal that I don't even talk about this in my personal life. And, um, but I'm going to share it with you in case, you know, in case it's helpful for someone. Um, but before we get to that, I'm going to, I want to, um, share with you something that's going on with my, my daughter. So, um, as you might know, I have three children. Um, I have a 23 year old son and I have twins that are 19 years old. So, um, about, well, I was trying to remember probably about, uh, nine, maybe 10 years ago. Um, one of my daughters, we started to notice that she was possibly showing signs of having problems with her adrenal glands. And, um, she's away at school right now and she's, you know, got, you know, I'm very fortunate. My kids have never really been sick. They've never had strep throat. They've never had tonsillitis. They've never really even had the flu. Um, we've, you know, other than mom having Addison's disease, um, we don't get colds. We don't get sniffles. We don't get anything like that. So she's away at school and she's experiencing her very first run at antibiotics and dealing with what we thought at the start of the week was strep throat, but, but it's come back, um, as negative. So, so we've been watching her for Addison's. Why have we been watching her for Addison's? Um, so my daughters played ringette when they were younger. If you don't know what ringette is, it's an ice sport in Canada, um, popular in Canada, mainly for girls, um, kind of similar to hockey. It's played on a rink and, um, instead of a puck we use they use like a six inch ring um which their stick doesn't have um you know it, it's cut off at the end so it's just a stick so the stick goes in the middle of the ring and then they skate down the ice and um they they play by the rules and then they try to shoot and score just like in hockey so so we were away um at a hockey at a ringette tournament i was away with them and they were old enough that i was no longer allowed in the change room with them when they get they got changed they were all on their own and my one daughter came barreling out of the change room as I was waiting for them and very, very panicky. And if you've ever had experience with twins and you hear one panicking about the other one, it's very concerning because, you know, they have that deep, deep connection and they kind of know what's going on with each other. And, and Paige came out of the change room, mom, 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 there's something wrong with Grace. There's something wrong with Grace. And I could hear the panic in her voice. And I was like, what, what's wrong? Like they had played maybe three, four games in the weekend already. And I'm like, what, what, what's, what's wrong with your sister? And she's like, mom, she's acting like you. I'm like, what do you mean by she's acting like you? She's acting like you and you don't feel well. And Grace came out of the change room. And I will never forget that moment when she walked out of that change room. And I could just tell by looking at her, I could tell by the look in her eyes that she felt like I felt with low cortisol or something. There was something going on and, and Paige was right. She was acting like me. So she, um, they had to have dinner and, um, we were going to go to the mall and, and get dinner. And she just wanted to go back to the hotel room. She wanted to be alone. She wanted nobody around her. She didn't want to be touched. She didn't want, you know, absolutely everything that, um, I experience and feel during low cortisol or whatever was going on with her body. She was, I could hear it in her voice. So I convinced her to go to the mall. We, um, she got a sub, she ate her sub. She didn't feel any better. Um, I asked her, do you still, could you still eat something? And she said, yes. So I actually went and, and she likes KFC and she likes popcorn chicken. So I went and bought her some popcorn chicken and, um, you know, and I watched <laughs> and she ate that popcorn chicken. And within 15 minutes, you know, I could see that little bit of life come back into her. It was like, you could tell, you know, her sodium was being um, restored and her mood changed and life was coming back in, into my girl. And so the trick now from what I've learned from my family doctor is we've been trying to watch her. We've been trying to catch that moment because he told me the adrenal glands, they are so strong. They are so amazing. They can fight for her for a long time, which I know they fought. I know I had adrenal insufficiency. I had Addison's disease for a very, very long time. We can trace symptoms back. Um, I think almost, almost 15 years before I was diagnosed where I had these ups and downs of different things that my body was going through. Um, so we've had blood work. We've been trying to catch her, um, in a moment where it showed that there's possibly something going on. 
And um, so this week she's been sick. We did some blood work on her because she was going away at school. I just wanted to check in on her before she went away to school. And in August, um, she actually had high cortisol came back. Um, and my doctor said to me, that's very possible because she had a stressful week leading up to that blood work. And she felt very good in the morning going into that blood work. She was actually very, very chatty, which explains the high cortisol. Um, he said what possibly could have happened is she was at a low point and her, her pituitary, you know, secreted extra ACTH, um, which, you know, to get those adrenal glands to kick in because things were low and then they've overcompensated. And we've actually caught um, a picture of her having high cortisol, trying to overcompensate for the low cortisol. So made sense to me. Okay. Her, her ACTH was actually normal, but he said it metabolizes that hormone is going to get out of her blood so quickly. It might be really, really hard to catch that moment right now when that ACTH is high. So now my girl, so she went away to school. He gave her blood work to do if she doesn't feel well at school, trying to catch that moment. Well, now she, she's sick at school with a throat infection. And I told her to go, um, for her blood work, which she did yesterday morning. Um, we got some of the results back and her cortisol is, and she actually said to me yesterday morning, mom, I think it's going to be okay. Cause, cause cortisol wise, what she's kind of monitored herself over in the last 10 years. Um, she's like, she goes, I feel pretty good that way. She goes, I don't feel like if, if it's low cortisol, she goes, I don't feel like anything's low. She goes, I feel pretty good, pretty good that way. And her cortisol actually came back high again. Um, again, we don't have the ACTH results back yet because they take a few days. Um, but it, just shows, you know, just another little bit of a red flag. It's not super high, but it was higher than what it should be. Um, and my poor daughter um, learned, you know, this is where it's so important for me to fight for a lot of reasons, not only for myself, but the things that I'm trying to teach my kids. And, and I've have fought over the last, you know, time that I, I've had a chronic illness to put together a medical team that's very, very caring, that's very, you know, in line to my goals and my quality of life. And, you know, my children have been very spoiled by that. And although they've heard about some of the, you know, the experiences I've had dealing with, um, you know, ignorant people in the medical community and just not warm, fuzzy people <laughs> um, in the medical community. Um, yeah, they've been very fortunate by that and very spoiled. And um, so, you know, my daughter had to go back to the walk-in clinic last night because her antibiotics aren't working. We are concerned about her cortisol levels. You know, is she not getting better because her cortisol is low and she's having that prolonged time to fight an infection? What are we going to do? We got, we have to be on this. We have to advocate for ourselves. And um, so I sent her back to the walk-in clinic and again, new experience for her to do all this stuff by herself away from home. And um, so she went last night and I told her, you know, you have to tell get in the habit because we're following you, watching you for Addison's disease. We have to, you have to get in the habit. Now, every time you go to an appointment, say, you know, I might have Addison's disease. We're, we're tracking this, we're doing this. And um, so she went in, told the doctor, you know, I'm not feeling any better. I've been on antibiotics. Her, um, her swab for strep actually came back negative. So she just wanted to know, you know, what to do. And, um, the doctor was not very warm and fuzzy with her. And um, she said, she explained to him, you know, I have a family history of Addison's disease and I'm kind of concerned about it. And she was very upset after when she talked to me because she said, mom, he just looked at me and said, Addison's disease has nothing to do with this. This is, that is a hormonal disease and it's not going to affect your strep. And she's like, mom, I had to go in and I had to tell him, but if my body is under stressed and I don't have under stress and I don't have cortisol to fight the infection, it's going to take my cortisol down low if I actually have Addison's disease. And she's like, he just looked at me like I was an idiot. <laughs> and, uh, and I said to her, I go, well, you know what you have to remember is that you're the idiot or he's the idiot, not you. <laughs> um, and then that's what you're going to deal with because you have to appreciate how much you know about this illness and you know so much. And you know so much more than he does. So, and that's what you're going to um, deal with if you live with this illness. You're going to have to be the educator. You're going to have to be the one that bites the bullet. You're going to be the one that's going to, you know, have to sit in these appointments and and deal with that. So, um, so yeah, so her cortisol came back high. We're keeping an eye on her. 
Um, if you don't know my family history of adrenal insufficiency, my father had primary Addison's. He was diagnosed at 22. I was diagnosed at 35. We are watching my daughter. My dad has a first cousin with adrenal insufficiency and my mom does as well. And my dad's father was a type one diabetic. So, um, we have a lot of autoimmune floating around in our family and, um, but yes, one, one positive thing that I am taking from dealing with this illness is, you know, teaching my kids to advocate for themselves and she, she's going to have to fight. She's going to have to advocate and get results. And, um, and again, be very thankful that, that we have a medical team that, you know, she's got the standards of my family doctor and we are very blessed to have that and very fortunate. So if you need a medical team, keep looking for them. They are out there. There are caring, passionate people out there that are going to help you with your quality of life. And I hope what I'm going to personally share with you today <laughs> about my personal life, you know, this is something new to me that I didn't really know that existed. Um, and it's really helped me. And I'm going to actually talk to my family doctor about it, about maybe, you know, is this something that I can use possibly on a, you know, on a, on a, not on a regular basis, but maybe when I feel that I need it, is it something safe to use? Cause we know when we have adrenal insufficiency, I truly believe and preach that if we can manage the little things in life, the stressors in life, the, the, we need to take top notch care of our health, um, so that we don't have low cortisol. So we have the quality of life. If you want quality of life, you have the power to do it, but I promise you it's going to take some work. I remember when I was diagnosed, my family doctor didn't know me, um, very much at all at that point in, in our relationship as, um, um, as a patient and doctor kind of thing. And um, I remember him looking at me and he's so knowledgeable in this. He did his doctorate in South Africa and he told me they do a lot of more studying about it. It's more prevalent there and they 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 learn a lot more about it. So, and he said he always got in trouble for liking, he called it the freak cases. <laughs> so I'm one of his freak cases, you know, the rare, the unusual, you don't see it very often. You know, he's very intrigued by that. So, um, he, he said he really always took in that knowledge because he found it extremely interesting. So um, I remember one of the first things that really stuck with me is he looked at me, he said, if you want to live and have quality of life, he goes, you better take care of yourself. You better eat well, you better exercise, you better do all those things. He goes, if not, he goes, you are not going to. And um, I remember how much that hit home. And I remember once I went into his office and I had just, I actually hung drywall in my basement and I was so low. I was so exhausted. And I said to him, you know, like, I just, maybe I shouldn't do those things anymore. And I, he looked at me, he goes, he goes, I am so proud of you. And he swears a lot. So he used a couple, <laughs> he used the F word a lot. So um, I remember there was a couple of F words in there and he, and he was so, you know, so proud of me. And he's like, because that's exactly what I want. He goes, I feel like you're one of my kids right now. He goes, he's like, you go out and you just do that. He goes, you live life. He goes, and you learn every time you go low, you learn, you learn when you have to updose, you learn what you have to do to keep moving. He goes like, because if not, this, this illness is going to, going to, it's going to take me over. Right. So, um, so I'm going to approach him about this. Um, what I'm going to share with you, because I'm wondering if it's going to help a little bit with my quality of life and maybe it's going to help yours as well. So, um, if you listen to one of the past episodes, I'm just kind of recovering now from some back injuries that I got, I got a compression fracture in December, um, at my, T6, which is just complete stupidity on my, my part. So, so, so don't be like me. Don't, don't try and move your treadmill when, when you have adrenal insufficiency and you have osteoporosis and you have bone issues and you have spine issues already. Don't do that. Okay. Um, and three broken feet in the last two years and a whole bunch of other stuff. Okay. Sometimes I don't have common sense. Okay. And then that led to um, spinal inflammation at L3 and 4, which was took even longer to recover. And I'm just in the last couple of days actually feeling um, more and more like myself. So, um, but what happened in that time period, and here comes the really personal part. Um, you know, we had Christmas, we had extra eating. Um, with my adrenal insufficiency, I know my internal plumbing isn't always the best because I am chronically dehydrated, Okay um, chronically, chronically dehydrated. My renin le levels are always super high. Um, we know we can't balance it between sodium and potassium. There's just not a perfect system working inside of me that way. So with that being said, 
I'm always under stress. So like I said, we need to control all these little stressors in our lives. We need to find that as best as we can to find optimal health because we're going to bring down the stressors internally. And when we do that, we're going to, I believe, burn cortisol left less we're going to use that cortisol to live life all those things that we want to do um we're, we're going to be able to do it we're not going to be have to deal with what's going on inside to regulate ourselves so so anyways so now back injury christmas overeating um a sluggish system to begin with and as a side note i am going back to my iv treatments we're going to go back to them um and one of the perks i found about the iv treatments was you know for about you know, three, four days afterwards, it just cleaned out my system. Okay. You could tell my body going, Oh, we now have the fluid to do what we need to do. And that's like super, super important because everybody, everybody's happier with a happier pooper. Okay. Like seriously, like let's, let's be a hundred percent. We all know it. It's a fact of life. Okay. Um, so anyways, we had back injury moving less. Um, we have extra medication. We had Christmas, we had overeating and then we had the second back injury, which put me on some mild narcotics. Um, but the mild narcotics also had, um, you know, complications of it, you know, side effects. And that is, you know, comp constipation. Um, when I had the back x-rays for the second injury, um, it was with my family doctor in the ER. And he looked at them and he goes, yep, hurt your back. He goes, and you're full of shit. <laughs> so and I was like, yeah, yeah, I know that it's Christmas. And I know how my system works. And I tried... Um, all the traditional stuff that has worked for me in the past and it wasn't working. So I, you know, and again, trying to prevent, I am like, okay, so now what's going to happen? You know, now I'm going to put my body under stress because, because of this, I have to fix this because I know something's not functioning properly. And what is this going to lead to, you know, in a regular person, it's going to re lead to, you know, discomfort. It's going to, you know, lead to, you know, some awkward, maybe moments and things like that, but they're going to clear it out. What could it lead to me? All those moments. Plus it could also put me in a, a life-threatening adrenal crisis. And when it comes to the tubing in the body um, and water and sodium and potassium balance, you know, I, I don't want my kids to be at my funeral saying, you know what, what happened to your mom? Well, well, she couldn't poop and then she died, <laughs> you know, like that, that's not how I want my end to be. So I had to get on top of it. So I went, you know, into my pharmacy and again, love my pharmacy. I got a great pharmacy staff now that know me well, told them the situation, told me my fear. They're like, yep, let's get on it. They recommended lactulose, um, which is something my daughter used when she was younger. And that kind of worked. And another thing that I'm very fortunate of is my sister's a pharmacy tech. And she's extremely knowledgeable. And she's extremely knowledgeable at Addison's. So, um, and she loves me. Okay, so that always, you know, you know, I can trust her 150% when she tells me what to do. So she recommended something else and it's called and it's something that you might want to look into if it works for you. And if you're watching on YouTube, I'm going to show it now. It's called Laxidae. I never heard of it before. Okay. So here it is. What it is, it's a little powder that you put in. You take your little cap, you mix it in with water, coffee, tea, pop. Um, you mix your dose in and you drink it right away. Um, and what it does, what I understand it does, it's a very gentle system. So that's what my concern was with my Addison's, if we shift my electrolytes too quickly, um, what's going to happen? My body might not be able to stop the storm that's going on in my body. And is my sodium going to drop? Is my potassium going to drop? Go too high, too low? What's going to happen? I had to be very cautious of that. So um, so we started on the laxidae. And basically what happens is it slowly moves water into your intestines. And as it does that in a very gentle way, it very slowly moves everything through the system. And then eventually, what I'd like to say, it takes it to the exit point and then you have success. <laughs> so um, what happens with that? It, it does take a few days. It did cause bloating. It did cause, like, I was panicking, texting my sister. I'm like, oh my, like, I, I look like I'm six months pregnant and, and like, what's going on? And she's like, just trust me. She goes, it just takes time. It's going to work. It'll be okay. And, um, and it did, it worked. It took about a week and um, not a, a week, week, but I'd say a week to completely to feel like, you know, that feeling, you know, that feeling when your system is just doing what it should. And, um, you feel, you feel lighter <laughs> when, when you're not, uh, let me say it again, when you're not full of shit. Okay. So excuse me there, but, um, 
but you know the difference, you know the feeling. And that is something, especially if you have a chronic illness and you have low cortisol, you're not moving as much. You don't have the energy. You don't have the strength. You're laying around a lot. It is going to affect your internal system. So you need to make sure that, you know, your diet is get rid of those processed foods, get that fiber up. You know, I eat a lot of Brussels sprouts. I eat a lot of steel cut oats. I eat all those things, green pepper. You know, I eat those things that I know, you know, your body. So you need to figure out what it is and you need to be personally responsible to do it. But something you might want to look into is laxidae. Okay. So I am going to ask my family doctor, I'm going back to my IV treatments because it does help um, with that part of my bodily function, <laughs> which is extremely important. Okay. Our gut health is top notch. One of the things we need to take care of. Um, but is this something that I can feel that I can use, you know, if I feel like I'm, you know, having issues, you know, how often can I personally safely use it to, so that I don't make everything worse, right? Cause we don't want to abuse things like this because we don't want to make things worse. So something definitely I suggest you look into and, um, you know, and I can't stress enough how important it is to take care of these little stressors in life. We are all going into, we all have the ability to write the chapters in this illness. Okay. And I do believe if we start writing and looking at things outside of the box, outside of the medication, we have the medication is just a small, small part of it. Um, and I know so many of you are dealing with multiple conditions and ailments and different things in your life. So we always want to run across the finish line and get there right away, but it takes it takes one step at a time. And um, this might be a step that might start to make you feel a little bit better, um, make you feel a little bit more empowered in taking, you know, in your health and your wellness. And when you start to feel better and when you really start to focus on those positive things, amazing things, I promise you, amazing things will happen. So, um, so please, please reach out to me um, at the pickle jar at rogers.com and even better go to my website at chroniclyfitcanada.com as well and um, if you're watching on youtube or if you haven't yet please go to the youtube channel please make comments please help others find these videos please make comments about what you like if you find them useful um, or anything anything that maybe video wise that i can do for you i want to hear from you okay so um again it's laxaday google it Ask your pharmacist, ask your doctor about it. And until next time, please be well, my pickles.